While a man named Charles is having a meeting with his business partners, he gets interrupted by his daughter Alice, who has just woken up from a bad dream. Charles immediately goes to attend to her, and while trying to get her to go back to sleep, Alice tells him that she keeps having the same dream about a strange place. He then tells her not to be bothered by her dream, and that if she gets too scared, she can just pinch herself to wake up. Many years later, after Charles's death, Alice is leaving the house with her mother, Helen, for a party at the Ascot family house. While on their way, Helen complains about her daughter's dress, but Alice says she doesn't care what people think she should wear. She initially sounds a bit harsh to her mom, so she says sorry and tells Helen that she didn't sleep well. Helen asks if she's still having the same dreams, and Alice says it hasn't stopped. After a while, they get to the party, where they meet the host, Lord Ascot, and his wife, Lady Ascot, who immediately tells Alice to go and meet her son, Hamish. As Alice leaves, Lady Ascot soon follows her, while Lord Ascot decides to speak with Helen. He tells her not to think of him as someone who is taking advantage of her family's misfortunes, and she says she doesn't see the situation like that. It turns out that after Charles' death, things didn't go too well for his family, and Lord Ascot decided to buy Charles's company as a way to help them. In addition to that, he also got Helen to support Hamish's decision to ask Alice to marry him. While Alice and Hamish are dancing at the party, Lady Ascot signals her son to come over. He understands this and immediately tells Alice to meet him under the gazebo after a few minutes. As he walks away, two girls approach Alice to ask if she's already aware of what's happening. Alice doesn't understand what they're saying, but as she presses them further for an answer, the two girls tell her that Hamish will propose to her under the gazebo. While looking confused, Alice's sister Margaret shows up and takes Alice away from the two girls. She tells Alice that what the girls said is true and that the party they're currently at is supposed to be her wedding party. Alice is shocked to hear this, especially because everyone at the party knows about it except her. Before they can continue their conversation, Lady Ascot appears before them and asks to take a walk with Alice. While they're walking together, she indirectly warns Alice to take care of her son and be a good wife. Alice is not too invested in the topic, and she suddenly gets distracted when she sees a white rabbit in a waistcoat moving through the bushes. Lady Ascot tries to get her attention, but Alice eventually runs off, saying she needs to confirm what she saw. As she's looking around, Hamish shows up behind her and takes her to the gazebo. There, he goes down on one knee and proposes to her. However, Alice says she's not sure about what her answer should be. She sees the rabbit again and tells Hamish that she needs a moment to herself, after which she runs in the direction of the rabbit, leaving everyone shocked. Alice sees the rabbit go down a hole, and as she tries to check it, she falls in and lands inside a strange living room. She sees a key on a table and immediately tries to check if it opens any of the doors, but it works only for a small door that can't fit her. Suddenly, she sees a potion on the table with the instruction for her to drink it. As Alice drinks it, she reduces in size and becomes really small. She then realizes that she can go through the small door in her current form, but it turns out the key is on the table and she can't reach it. As she looks around, she sees a cake on the floor with the instruction to eat it. And as she does, she grows bigger. With a combination of the cake and liquid potion, Alice is able to get the key and go through the small door. After walking for a while, she sees a group of creatures led by the white rabbit who says he's sure he got the right Alice. As he argues with the Dormouse and two men named Tweedledee and Tweedledum, Alice interrupts them and asks why they think she's a fake Alice when they're in her dream. They seem confused by this, but to confirm whether she's the Alice they need, they take her to meet a blue caterpillar named Absalom. After a while, Alice meets Absalom, who also sounds unsure about whether she's the right Alice. He tells her to unroll a scroll, which is like a calendar that reports past and future events. As Alice opens it, Absalom tells the white rabbit to show her the Frabjus day. Alice asks what it's about, and Tweedledee tells her it's a day in the future when she'll slay a creature called the Jabberwocky with a Vorpal sword. According to the scroll, it turns out that someone named Alice will save the creatures in the kingdom from the Red Queen and the Jabberwocky. Alice says she's not who they think she is, and as the White Rabbit asks Absalom if she's the right one, he says she's hardly what they're looking for. As the Dormouse and the other creatures start accusing Alice of being an imposter, she looks surprised because she still thinks they're actually in her dream. She pinches herself to wake up, but nothing happens, except that a creature named Bandersnatch shows up with some other soldiers of the Red Queen, led by a man named Stain. Some of the creatures get snatched by the soldiers, but Alice is able to escape 
However, just as Bandersnatch starts chasing her, she believes she's in a dream, so she stands still and pinches herself to wake up. The Dormer sees this and immediately runs to help her. She climbs on Bandersnatch and stabs one of his eyes and keeps it. This hurts the giant creature, which then scratches Alice, who still looks confused and realizes that everything is real. She eventually runs away and avoids being snatched by the Red Soldiers. Meanwhile, Stain finds the scroll on the floor and looks at it, after which he leaves with his men. Elsewhere, Alice walks around the forest until she comes across a Cheshire cat, who offers to help her bandage the wound on her hand because if it's not taken care of, it could make her sick. He asks Alice for her name and as soon as she says it, he asks if she's the same Alice everyone is waiting for. Alice, however, says she doesn't know what he's talking about. The cat then says he'll take her to meet a man named the Mad Hatter and his hair. Meanwhile, Stain arrives at the Red Queen's palace. She looks happy to see him and asks what he has been up to. He says he just found a scroll show that someone named Alice would kill her Jabberwocky. The Red Queen doesn't look happy to hear this, and she instructs Stain to find Alice. After a while, the Cheshire Cat leads Alice to meet the Mad Hatter and his hair, who are also with the Dormouse. The Mad Hatter immediately recognizes Alice and says she's the one they've been looking for. Even though the Dormouse tries to convince him otherwise, the Mad Hatter says he's sure she's the one. Just then, Stain arrives with his men to look for Alice. The Mad Hatter immediately gives her a potion that makes her smaller, after which he hides her inside a kettle. While Stain and his men start looking around, the Mad Hatter says he knows nothing about Alice. Meanwhile, Stain's dog, Bayard, realizes that Alice is inside the kettle, but the Mad Hatter tells him not to say anything. With this, Bayard leads Stain and his men away. As Alice comes out of the kettle, the hare tells her she's lucky that Bayard is one of them. Just as she asks what the Mad Hatter wants with her, the hare suggests that she's taken to the White Queen's castle because it's safe. However, the Mad Hatter says they need to start working on how Alice will get the Vorpal sword and slay the Jabberwocky. He tells her to come with him, and as he takes her away, she tells him to stop thinking she'll slay anything because she's not cut out for that. The Mad Hatter then decides to leave her in the middle of nowhere, saying she doesn't know what the Red Queen did to the land. He also says she's not like she used to be, and this makes her ask what the Red Queen did. The Mad Hatter then narrates how the White Queen used to be the real queen, until her sister, the Red Queen, unleashed her Jabberwocky and forcefully took the crown, after which she wreaked havoc in the land. Before he can continue his story, he sees that the Red Soldiers are already nearby, so he picks Alice up and starts running. After a while, he decides to sacrifice himself so that Alice can escape. Before he lets her go, he tells her to find the White Queen's castle and starts preparing for the Frabjus day. After using his hat to get across a river, Bayard meets Alice there and says he wants to help her get to the White Queen's castle. Alice says she wants to go to the Red Queen's castle to rescue the Mad Hatter instead. And even though Bayard doesn't think this is a good plan, he eventually takes her there. After she gets there, it doesn't take long before she sees the White Rabbit, who looks shocked to see her. She says she's there to save the Mad Hatter, but the Rabbit says she can't do that in her small form. He then gives her a cake that makes her grow bigger, but this immediately makes the Red Queen see her. Alice then lies that she's someone else, and she's just traveling around. The Red Queen seems to like her, and she takes Alice into her castle. Stain also meets Alice, and he looks intrigued by her beauty. Shortly after, the Mad Hatter is brought in for a hearing, and as he sees Alice beside the Red Queen, he looks surprised, but pretends not to know her. Instead of staying still to receive his judgment, the Mad Hatter approaches the Red Queen and offers to make her more beautiful by making some hats for her. Even though Stain doesn't look pleased with this, the Red Queen grants the Mad Hatter permission to make her some hats. Meanwhile, Bayard goes to the White Queen's castle to inform her of Alice's return to the land. He, however, says sorry for taking her to the Red Queen's castle. The White Queen says he didn't do anything wrong, and he actually did well because the Vorpal Sword is at the Red Queen's castle, and Alice might be able to get it there. Elsewhere, Alice goes to meet the Mad Hatter while he's making hats for the Red Queen. During their conversation, the Mad Hatter tells her that he has gotten information that the Vorpal Sword is somewhere in the castle, and she needs to find it. Just then, she heads over to find the White Rabbit to help her, but he says the only issue with the sword is that Bandersnatch is guarding it. Alice immediately comes up with an idea and gets Bandersnatch's missing eye from the Dormouse. As she then walks over to find the Vorpal sword, Stain approaches her and says he likes her. However, she says she's not interested, but one of the Red Queen's loyal advisors sees this. Shortly after, Alice enters the secret room where the sword is being kept. She returns Bandersnatch's eye, and he looks pleased with this. Unfortunately, Alice's wounds start to hurt, 
and she eventually passes out. Meanwhile, the Mad Hatter starts trying his hats on the Red Queen. While at it, her loyal advisor comes over to report what she saw, and this gets her furious. When Alice wakes up, she sees Bandersnatch in front of her, but instead of harming her, he only licks off the venom on her wound so that she gets better. Following this, she then retrieves the Vorpal sword. Elsewhere, the Red Queen summons Stain to question him about what she was told, but he lies that he was seduced into saying what he said. Just then, she tells him to get Alice arrested, and he finds her in a room with the Mad Hatter, the White Rabbit, and the Dormouse. The Mad Hatter immediately tells Alice to run away, but she says she can't leave without him. Just as the Mad Hatter starts fighting with Stain, the Dormouse tells Alice to leave with the sword. She makes the mistake of calling Alice by her real name, and Stain realizes that the person he has been looking for is right in front of him. Alice immediately runs out, but Stain and his men stop her from going too far. Before she can be arrested, Bandersnatch shows up and saves Alice, after which he takes her toward the White Queen's castle. Stain goes to report this to the Red Queen, but she doesn't look too pleased. Meanwhile, Alice is warmly received at the White Queen's castle. The Queen gets the Vorpal sword from her and puts it next to an armored suit. After she says that all she now needs is a champion, she tells Alice that there's someone who wants to see her. Almost immediately, Alice meets with Absalom again, and this time he says she's so close to being the Alice everyone needs. He then tells her to prepare for the Frabjuice Day now that the sword has been found. While the Mad Hatter is in prison, the Cheshire Cat visits him. After they talk for a while, he offers to help the Mad Hatter right before he is executed. The next day, when it's time for the Mad Hatter's execution, the Cheshire Cat uses his disappearing act to save the Mad Hatter, who appears behind the Red Queen. He eventually makes his way down and tells everyone present that they need to rise against the Red Queen. This gets her angry, and she sends her men to attack the Mad Hatter and his followers. However, they're eventually able to escape and return to the White Queen's castle, with Alice and the Queen looking happy to see them. The next day turns out to be the Frabjuice Day, and the Queen asks for a volunteer to be the champion who will represent them in a contest against the Jabberwocky. Even though the Mad Hatter, the Cheshire Cat, and a couple of other creatures volunteer, they all realize that according to the scroll, the only time they can win is if Alice becomes their champion. Even though Alice is still scared because she'll have to slay the Jabberwocky, Absalom shows up and encourages her. He also finally acknowledges that she's the right Alice, and with this, she agrees to become the champion. After a while, the White and Red Queen lead their people to the battlefield. The White Rabbit tells both women to bring out their champion, and while the White Queen sends out Alice, the Red Queen sends out the Jabberwocky. The battle soon starts, and Alice remains scared as she tries her best to put on a good fight. The Red Queen soon leads her people to fight against the White Queen's followers. While they fight on land, Alice and the Jabberwocky take their fight to the top of a tower. After overcoming her fear, Alice chops off the Jabberwocky's head and leaves the Red Queen angry. She tells her soldiers to kill Alice, but none of them answer her. They then switch allegiance to the White Queen, who gets back her crown and banishes the Red Queen and Stain from the land. She then thanks Alice for her efforts, after which she gives her the blood of the Jabberwocky and tells her to drink it so it can take her home. As she's about to drink it, the Mad Hatter tells her to wait behind, but she says there are things she still needs to do at home. She, however, says she can come back to see him, but he says she won't remember him. She drinks the Jabberwocky's blood, and everything around her disappears. She then comes out of the hole she fell into, after which she returns to the wedding party and tells Hamish he's not the one for her. She also tells her mom not to worry about her, and that she'll find something useful to do with her life. Alice then faces Lord Ascot and says she has some business to discuss with him. She follows him to his office, and there, she says she has thought of a plan to expand the trade routes for his business all the way to China. Even though he thinks it's an impossible plan, he agrees to go with whatever she has come up with. He also offers her a job as an apprentice at his company, and she happily accepts. Days later, she gets on a ship and waves goodbye to Helen, Margaret, and everyone in the town as she happily embarks on a journey to set her plans for Lord Ascot's business in motion.